Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at the elite infantry of the Imperial Guard and asking and answering one simple question. Which is better, the Militarum Tempesta Scions or the Cadian Kazakin? Both of these units bring a lot to the table, combining an impressive stat line with awesome firepower. But understanding the key and unique differences between these two units is vitally important. Whilst on the surface, these two units look very similar, they actually perform completely different roles in your army. And knowing which one is going to be right for you could be the difference between victory and defeat on the tabletop. And with that bold statement made, let's strike true and strike with precision and dive straight into today's episode. So firstly, let's start off with the new kids on the block, the Kazakin. In the fluff, the Kazakin are made up of the most veteran guardsmen from each Cadian regiment. These elite soldiers are banded together into squads to maximize their effectiveness and concentrate their power. Every Kazakin is a natural born survivor who has been through countless battles and has lifetimes of combat experience under their belt. When this combat experience is combined with the best armor and equipment that the Cadian Quartermasters can provide, you get an incredibly potent squad on the battlefield. But that is in the fluff. What about in the crunch? Well, on the tabletop, the Kazakin are an elite choice and they have an improved stat line over your regular guardsmen. They have the same strength and toughness, but they come with improved ballistic skills, so they hit on a 3 plus rather than a 4 plus. Each man also has an extra attack, an extra leadership, and a 4 plus save rather than a 5 plus save. They also can take lots of special weapons. In fact, each 10 man squad can be equipped with four special weapons, although they can only take two of the same one. What this means is you can take two plasma guns and two melter guns, but you couldn't, let's say, take four melter guns in a single squad. They also come with lots of cool, unique upgrades like the hotshot sniper rifle and the melter mine. They also come with the Cadian keyword, which unlocks a few extra relics and stratagems for them. And they do have the regimental and platoon keywords, which means that you can give them orders from your officers. And they can also benefit from real ones to hit and real ones to wound from various command squads and castellans because they do have that core keyword as well. But the thing that really separates them, what makes them stand out and is absolutely their unique selling point is their warrior elite ability. This allows them to take an extra regimental doctrine as long as no one else in your army already has it. What that means is if you have taken born soldiers as your overall regimental doctrine for your whole army, each Kazakhan squad can be given another regimental doctrine on top of that. Perhaps you want to make sure that Hotshot's knife rifle always hits. Take elite shock troopers. Maybe you want to have those melt guns of a bit longer range. You could put heirloom weapons on another squad. Or you just want a squad that's a little bit faster and able to run around the battlefield at a faster pace. Swift of the Wind has got you covered. Understanding and making best use of the Warrior Elite ability is absolutely vital for getting the most out of your Kazakin on the battlefield. It's also really important to understand that Kazakin can get up to three regimental doctrines on a single squad. If you choose not to take Born Soldiers, you could take Elite Sharpshooters and Heirloom Weapons. And then also, for your Warrior Elite ability, get a third regimental doctrine and go for Swift as the Wind. It really does allow you to stack a lot of different doctrine buffs onto each squad. And whilst we are on the topic of regimental doctrines, one of the biggest differences between Kazakin and Scions is that Kazakin get regimental doctrines full stop. Whether it's Warrior Elite or not, they get regimental doctrines. Scions do not get them. They have something else to compensate for it, and we will be taking a look at that later on. But the biggest and most important difference between the two units is one gets regimental doctrines and the other one does not. So why are Kazakhins so great? Because a lot of people are really excited about this unit and they are even being called the best squad in the entire codex, which is a pretty bold claim for people to make. 
Well, firstly, they are surprisingly cheap. A 10-man squad will only set you back 100 points, and they come with pretty much all of their upgrades for free. For example, you could get a Kazakin squad with a hotshot last pistol on the sergeant and a chainsaw, and then you could also have two melter guns, two plasma guns, a hotshot sniper, a melter mine, a voxcaster, and a couple of basic rifle dudes, and that's only going to cost you about 100 points, which is pretty tasty. All of those special weapons and upgrades give them a crap load of firepower and the amount of damage output that Kazakin can do for their price point is very impressive. They have great force concentration, which is actually something that Guard normally struggles with. Traditionally, Guard have been a bit of a horde army, waves of infantry marching forward, and generally speaking, you can carpet the battlefield in firepower, but sometimes it can be difficult to concentrate your damage output in a single location. What Kazakin do so brilliantly is bring so many special weapons in such a elite package that you can actually get force concentration where and when you need it. Slight side note here, and we will be coming back to this when we go on to the Scions, but it's important to note at this point that Kazakin technically get more special weapons than Scions because Kazakin can take four special weapons and Scions can take four special weapons, but... In addition to their four special weapons, Kazakin can take a hotshot sniper rifle. So essentially, they get five specials to the Scions four. And the hotshot sniper rifle is not to be sniffed at. It is a flat damage three weapon. It is very capable of taking a chunk out of enemy squads. One often overlooked aspect of the Kazakin is they're actually pretty good at bullying light infantry, especially if you gear them towards it. You see, they get two attacks per guy, and whilst they only hit on fours in combat normally, if you give them the fixed bayonets order, they go up to hitting on threes with plus one AP as well. Now, I know some people are going to say, but Morning Glory, don't Scions have the same stat line? Surely they're just as good at bullying light infantry as well. It is true, Scions aren't bad at it and they can perform the same job. But what you have to remember is that Kazakin can get that extra regimental doctrine via Warrior Elite. And taking brutal strength on a unit of Kazakin can make them a surprisingly good bully unit you don't want to be sending them up against terminators or anything like that but a unit of 10 kazakin can fairly comfortably get into combat with anything up to and including a five-man squad of marines but like i said it is a pretty niche use for them but it is a small advantage they do have over the scion so i thought it was worth mentioning it but moving back to more mainstream examples kazakin work really well with the imperial guard orders on a very basic level, if you give the take a order to a unit of Kazakin, and to be fair, Scions as well, they both equally benefit from it, then you suddenly have your guys hitting on a 2+. plus. If you've got a Castellan nearby, you're also rerolling once. That's as good as an Adeptus Custodes. And let me tell you, there's nothing that makes a Golden Boy player froth at the mouth and get more enraged than seeing regular humans shooting as good as his supposedly superior creations. But digging a little deeper is very interesting when it comes to orders and these two units. Because I tend to find that when you're running your Scions, you're putting take aim on them every single turn without even thinking about it. However, when it comes to Kazakin, you have a lot more variety and a lot more options when it comes to getting the right order for the right job. For example, if you're planning on doing the Kazakin bomb, which is where you supercharge unit of Kazakin and then fling it across the table using a relic that allows you to do like 18 mortal wounds in one go. It's very powerful. I've done a dedicated video on it. Go and check it out. But if you are doing the Kazakin bomb, then you're not actually likely to use the take aim order. Instead, you're more likely to use first rank fire, second rank fire. Because that gets you more shots, which means you have more opportunities to trigger mortal wounds. Or maybe you want your Kazakin to be ultra tough, digging in on an objective, making sure that you get those primary points in your next command phase. Well, then you would use the take cover order on them because this would give them light cover. And if they're in light cover, they get dense cover as well. Suddenly you've got a 10 man squad, which has got a three up save, a minus one to hit modifier. And if you really need to hold that objective, you could spend one command point on them to give them Kadia stands. So they actually get transhuman physiology and they can never be wounded on a one, two or a three during your opponent's shooting phase or combat phase. 
But it's not just regimental orders because you can look at the perfectors orders as well. And one really sneaky tactic is if you are facing off against an opponent who is going to be using a turn one deep strike maneuver against you and you do not want him getting all of those scabber cults in your face turn one, you don't want to let him get that alpha strike off. What you could do is take a unit of Kazakin and give them the regimental doctrine recon operators. Either have it as your main regimental doctrine or via their warrior elite ability. It's not a bad regimental doctrine to have on them in general because it makes your Kazakin a little bit more maneuverable. This gives you a pre-game move. So what you can then do is combine that with the laws of command relic, which allows you to give them an order in your opponent's turn. If you give your Kazakin squad the remain vigilant order which you can do using laws of command then it would mean that before the game even begins you do a pre-game move and you've given them the uh, remain vigilant order and suddenly this big 10-man squad is screening out a huge part of your army from getting alpha strike from some kind of turn one deep strike ability it's a niche role for the kazakin but it is one that they can do and it will completely screw over certain armies. The point I'm trying to make here is that your Kazakin are specialists. By combining different regimental doctrines and stratagems and orders, you can truly tailor each Kazakin squad to do a very potent but specific thing on the battlefield. Scions tend to be a little bit more one-dimensional and are only used in a couple of different ways, which we'll touch on when we get to them. But no unit in 40k is without its disadvantages. Okay, that's not true. Tau and Vodan have got some pretty spicy things. But apart from those bullshit factions, most units in 40k have got a disadvantage or a flaw, and the Kazakhin are no exception. By guard standards, they could be considered heavy infantry. By everyone else's standards, they are still certainly light infantry. A 4 plus save doesn't really mean a lot in 40k. And most of the time you will find that your Kazakhin are dying just as easily as your regular infantry squads. Of course, there are always exceptions that prove the rule. I went through a way you can use them to effectively dig in on an objective. But outside of that specialist way, you will find them getting picked up in short order. Combining this natural tendency to fall over and die when anyone looks at them with the fact that they are relatively short ranged, you will tend to find that your Kazakin are going to be one shot wonders. They're short range because most of their guns are rapid fire and you really need to be getting within a 12 inch range to be getting the most out of them. So typically what happens is your Kazakin squad will pop up. Either it's going to be from dropping out of a Valkyrie, jumping out of a Chimera or using the Barbican's key to teleport across the board. But they're going to pop up, they're going to do a lot of damage and then your opponent's turn, they're all going to go and meet the Emperor. Now, I know some players are going to be saying, but that's absolutely fine. They've done the damage. They can die afterwards. I don't care about them. That is true. But if you have a bit of a whiffer or your opponent happens to have a few stratagems that are able to absorb your damage, then suddenly you've just chucked a 100 point unit at them for nothing. And that's very disappointing and means that you've just wasted an important asset in your army. And this leads me on to the main problem with Kazakin, because it's all well and good being a specialist, being tailored to do something better than anybody else. But what if it just doesn't go off? What if you mess your dice up? What if your opponent effectively counters it? What if you're facing an army where your special squad isn't really going to be doing anything? You're not facing anyone with a turn one deep strike. You're not facing anyone who's going to be really affected by doing all the mortal wounds. Oh, they've got a fibrous field of pain against mortal wounds. Guess the Kazakhin bombs off the table then. And when you do encounter that scenario, suddenly your Kazakhin become a little underwhelming. And when you encounter this scenario, which I guarantee you will do at least once in every tournament you go to or one in 10 games that you play with your mates, you then realize that your Kazakhin have kind of just become an overpriced and not really much better squad of regular infantry. Comparatively, Scions don't suffer from that problem. There are a lot less specialists and a lot more take all comers, which means you tend to find that no matter the battlefield situation you're in, no matter the army you're facing, your Scions will always be able to perform and do their intended job. 
Continuing down this road, your Kazakin cannot deep strike, but your Scions can. The fact that the Canadian Elite can't deep strike means that there tends to be a hidden cost when you're fielding them. Either you need to spend a CP on a Relic, like the Barbican's Key, to allow them to teleport across the battlefield, or you need to be buying them a Chimera, or even a Valkyrie. But one way or another, there tends to be an extra cost that you have to factor in when running the Kazakin, but that's not something the Scions tend to have to worry about. So a lot of people will tell you, oh, Kazakin are cheaper and do the same job as Scions. And it's like, well, actually, no. In many cases, the Kazakin might actually be more expensive because the Scions are happy to footslog it around the place or deep strike in naturally, but the Kazakin can't do that. And the last little fly in the ointment is that you can only ever take three squads of Kazakin because they are an elite choice. Now, in many cases, you will probably only be plugging in one or two units of Kazakin to perform some specialist roles, but it would have been nice to be able to field entire companies of them. I know there will be some players out there that would have loved to have like a hundred Kazakin, maybe all mecked up in Chimeras. God, that would have been a beautiful sight to behold. But sadly, you can't do it. And by limiting them to only three squads, you are limiting their potential on the battlefield. So if we bring all of this together, what is the best way to use the Kazakin on the battlefield? Well, firstly, and most importantly, the golden rule when it comes to Kazakin is they are specialists and therefore give them a specific job in your army. If you just spam them mindlessly and you just think of them as some cool elite infantry to just have in your force, then you are not going to be getting the most out of them. At the end of the day, they are cheap as elite specialist infantry that can perform a specific job very well on the battlefield. As line infantry, they're significantly overcosted. If you are a new guard player or you're not quite sure how to use your Kazakin, here are three suggested tactics that you can use them for. Firstly, you can try the Kazakin Bomb. This is where you take a single unit of Kazakin in your army. You combine it with the full rerolls from the Lord Zola. You combine them with the Barbican's Key Relic, which allows you to teleport up across the board once per game. And you use that with the Stratagem Overcharged Lad Cells to jump across the board and do up to 18 mortal wounds to your opponent's army. It's a very potent Alpha Strike tactic. Or if you're looking to use three squads of Kazakin, you could consider the Creed Death Ball. This is pretty straightforward. You take Creed, you take three squads of Kazakin. Every turn, you tell Creed to order those squads. And using her Castellan's Fury ability, they all get plus one strength on their guns. Suddenly, you've got strength nine plasma, strength nine melter, strength four hotshot last guns. It just generally makes them a lot more punchy. Or if you're more of a treadhead, you could put a unit of Kazakin in a Chimera and make sure that one way or another, they've got the mechanized infantry doctrine. This allows you to get out of a transport after it's moved. This is actually a really good tactic because you can use it to snatch and grab an objective. Or if your opponent is hiding around the corner, maybe out of some line of sight, and he thinks there's no way you'll be able to get an angle on him, you could move your Chimera and then get your Kazakin out and suddenly you've got the angle that you need and you're able to blaze away into that supposedly hidden enemy unit. So that covers the Kazakin, but what about the Scions? We've heard plenty about the Cadian Elite, but now it's time to hear about the true glory boys of the Imperium. Well, the first thing to understand is that they have the same basic stat line as the Kazakin. They get the extra ballistic skill over regular Guardsmen, the extra attack, the extra save, the extra leadership. They have an elite Guardsman stat line. But after that, the differences start coming thick and fast. The first thing to mention is that while Scions in a regular Guard army come as an elite choice, they can actually be taken as a troops choice as well. If you take a detachment and it only includes Scion units, whether that's the squads or the command squads or the Toroxes or the Valkyries, if you only include Tempestus units, then your standard Militarm Tempestus Scion squads become troops rather than elites. This is really cool because it allows you to take entire armies of Scions, which is something you simply cannot do with your Kazakin. Just a little side note here, but running a pure Scion army is, in my opinion, one of the most fun and coolest ways of playing your Imperial Guard. They're just so different. They are very fragile, 
but they pack such a punch. And it's kind of like playing old school Dark Elder, where you've got all of the speed, all of the power, but you cannot take a punch to the face to save your life. It's very different when you compare that to regular guard, who tend to be slow and grinding and very durable. You've either got the heavy tanks, which can absorb punishment, or you've got so many infantry that casualties don't really matter. Playing Scions is still playing guard, it's just playing them in a very different and fun and refreshing way. But moving back towards Scions and comparing them to Kazakin, the Scions also have the platoon and core keywords, but they do not have the regimental keyword. Now, I just want to mention something here, guys. You may have noticed at the beginning of this sound segment that the slide at the bottom did say regimental and platoon. That was a mistake, and hopefully you can see at this point in the video, I have corrected it. I did think about not mentioning it, but I didn't want people to get confused. So if you're watching this video, let me be 100% clear with you. Scions have the core and the platoon keywords, but they do not have the regimental keyword. Now, this lack of regimental keyword is very important to understand because it doesn't stop them from receiving orders. Scions can still get take aim and also take cover and all that kind of good stuff. But what it does mean is that your Scions do not benefit from regimental doctrines. That's right. You can have a army with born soldiers, but if you have any Scions in that army, they will not benefit from sixes to hit auto wound. But the good news is that Scions don't break regimental doctrines for the rest of your army. You can still include a few units of Glory Boys without having to worry about losing Born Soldiers or whichever doctrines you picked for the rest of you guys. To make up for their lack of doctrines, Scions do get a special data sheet ability and it is very powerful and this is their unique selling point. They get the Storm Troopers ability. Each time a model in this unit makes an attack, an unmodified hit roll of a six scores one additional hit. This kind of ability is often known as exploding sixes. And what's important to note with your Scions is that it's not just ranged attacks, it's actually any kind of attack they make. And also it affects every single weapon in the squad. Now, if you compare this to the shock troopers ability of the Cadian shock troops, they also get exploding sixes, but it's only with ranged weapons and it's only with las guns. So the Scions have a souped up version of that. Yes, that means if you roll a six to hit with your melter gun, you get two hits. If you roll a pair of six to hit with your plasma guns, you get four hits. If you get a whole bunch of hotshot volley gun shots, and some of them are sixes, you just start turning that from a rapid fire weapon to a Gatling gun. Stormtroopers fundamentally defines how your sounds are going to work on the battlefield. They're not like Kazakin, who are going to be tailored for individual jobs, and you'll be able to pull off some 360 no scope 4D chess combination with them. No. That ability is focused on one thing and one thing only damage output. And that's how you need to be thinking about your Scions. They are not a particularly clever unit. They are a brutally efficient and powerful squad. And when you start massing them together, you can really start laying down the pain on your opponent. And this naturally leads us into why are Scions so great? Why do I personally prefer Scions over Kazakin? Well, as I mentioned, they can be a standalone army, which is great. And as part of this, they are a much more fleshed out force, generally speaking, than the Kazakin. If you want to take an army of Kazakin, you just can't. You get three squads, that's it, have fun with it. If you want to take an army of Scions, you've got Scions, you've got the command squads, they've got their own transports and fire support in the form of the Torox Primes and the Valkyries. You can really take quite a fleshed out force and as a whole, Scions just have more support options. Because they are less specialized, they are much more straightforward to use and easier for new players to get their head around. They are just great elite line infantry. You don't need to worry about coming up with some brilliant game plan to make them work. You can shove a few squads of Scions in your army and just generally throw them at the enemy, do some damage to them and have a great time. 
Now, I touched on this briefly in the Kazakin section, but a really big advantage that Scions have over the Kazakin is their ability to deep strike. And you can also combine this with the fact that they have a much more flexible squad size. Scions can be taken in squads of five to 10 men, whereas Kazakin are limited to just a 10 man brick. This ability to deep strike on its own gives them great maneuverability, unlike the Kazakin where you do have to start thinking about those hidden costs and how am I gonna get them up the battlefield? Scions just don't have that problem. If you want to just teleport them in turn two, you go for it. They've also got their own transports as well in the form of Torx Primes. They get advantages for going in Valkyries where they can jump out really close to the enemy that Kazakin do not. Overall, Scions are much more maneuverable than Kazakin. The flexible squad size as well is really important because it allows Scions to fulfill a couple of different roles on the battlefield. Either you can use them as those line infantry, big 10-man squads charging across the battlefield, laying down the firepower and just generally bringing the hurt to the enemy. Or you can play them in a completely different way and you can go, you know what, I'm just going to add a single five-man squad of Scions into my army. But what I'm going to do with those guys is use them to get some extra secondary objective points. Maybe you have taken retrieved data as one of your secondaries or banners. And you're like, you know what? I'm just going to drop the little five man squad in and I'm going to be able to retrieve that data or maybe raise that banner on the unoccupied objective. They're also pretty good for getting you engaged in all fronts too. Little five man squads of sounds are actually a really nice way of running them. They don't do any damage output but they do score you victory points. And at the end of the day, points mean prizes. And really, that's all you need to know about Sions when you think about it. Either you're going to use them as big squads or you're going to be using them as objective grabbers. Simple as that. And it's this simplicity which I think is truly their greatest strength for new players and veteran tournament players alike. If you're a new player, having a squad that you can get to grips with easily is such a relief. There's so many rules in 40k, it's generally quite a complicated game that it sometimes can be a little bit overwhelming. And just understanding what a squad can do by just looking at it, it's just such a great way to learn the game quickly and start having fun with your models. And for veteran players, it's also vitally important because if you're going to a tournament, one of the things that is rarely spoken about is the mental strain of playing five plus games of 40K. If you're going to win the event and you're going to a super major, you might need to play eight or nine games of 40K back to back, either across two days or maybe even three. And having units which are complicated that require loads of different moving parts can be a big problem. Because if you get to your final game and you've used all of your brain power, you're just absolutely knackered, you're gonna start making mistakes. You might forget what you need to use this unit for. You might miss an opening or an opportunity to use that specialist Kazakhin unit. But with Scions, it's straightforward. Did you take him as a five-man squad? Ah, oh, deep strike him in and get some rod. Did you take him to just do some offensive work? Ah, oh, just chuck him in and get them fighting, it's fine. They are really good for competitive players because they are a lot easier to use and therefore me keep you fresh and ready for the fight. And this simplicity is really well demonstrated in the way that your Scions are going to work with orders. When we were talking about orders and Kazakin, we were talking about how you might want to use first rank fire, second rank fire on them, how you might want to use take aim or take cover, how you may even start dipping your toe into some perfectus orders. None of that really matters. None of that really matters with Scions. When it comes to Scions, all you want to be doing is basically going, take aim. Because they're a damage dealing unit. Their purpose is to do hurt to the opponent. And just giving them a straight up to hit buff and AP buff just plays into that wheelhouse very nicely. The only other order you really want to be aware of when it comes to your Kazakin is the Perfectus order, get back in the fight. This allows them to fall back and still shoot which again plays very nicely into their primary role because anything that allows them to keep their finger down on the trigger and keep laying shots into the enemy is great. But just to go on a little bit of a deep dive on the orders for a second, there's another advantage that Scions have over Kazakin in this department, which is their command squads. You see, the Kazakin can receive regimental orders from command squads and castellans but they can only receive perfectus orders from either a officer that's got superior tactical training and is able to do perfectus orders or from a commissar 
but the Scions can take an upgrade on their command squad called the Command Rod. And this allows them to do Perfectus orders from their Tempesta Primes. This is really important to understand because it means that because your Tempesta Prime is in a command squad and they've got a Vox caster, just naturally Scions can do 24 inch range Perfectus orders, something which Kazakin can only emulate on a command squad that's got a CP spent on it for superior tactical training. But speaking of command squads, one of the biggest advantages of Scions is they truly have access to some of the best warlord traits and relics in the guard arsenal. I want to be clear here. I'm not saying they've got access to some good warlord traits. I'm saying they have access to the best warlord traits in the book, hands down. And they have three unique ones to pick from. The first unique Scion Warlord trait is Drill Commander. And this allows you to do maximum shots with rapid fire weapons at any range as long as you are within six inches of the Warlord's unit. This means that you can double tap your hotshot las guns from 24 inches away. Double tap your plasma from 24 inches away. Get maximum shots from a hotshot volley gun from 24 inches away. In my opinion, Drill Commander is the best Warlord trait in the book and the best one when combined with Scions. The reason for this is it massively improves their damage output and indirectly their durability. Because unlike Kazakin, who need to get up close and personal to really leverage their damage output, Scions don't need to. They can sit back at 24 inch range, which is surprisingly long and just blaze away with their guns at maximum output. This indirectly improves their durability because they're not in the immediate line of fire. They can hang back a little bit. They can help support from a distance. And therefore, your opponent is more often than not going to have to deal with the guardsmen squads that are rushing him, the rough riders that are coming at him. He's got to deal with those immediate threats the whole time whilst he is. The Scions are just blazing away and doing a lot of damage to his army. The next Warlord trait they have is Precision Targeting, and this one is also very good. It's an aura like Drill Commander, except instead of being able to double tap, it means that your Scions ignore the enemy cover. That is both light and dense. And finally, we have Uncompromising Prosecution, which is another aura, so it can affect a lot of Scion squads. If you are within half range of an enemy unit, then you get to improve the AP characteristic of your attacks by one. This does stack with Take Aim, which means you can have your Scions with basic guns at AP minus four. It makes your Plasma AP minus five. It makes your Melter the same AP as a Volcano Cannon going up to AP 6. On paper, you might think that Uncompromising Prosecution is absolutely the way to go, but I have found that it does mean you have to get up close and personal to the enemy, which does mean your Scions tend to do it once and then die, but also in 40k, you tend to come across a lot of invulnerable saves, and once you get above AP minus 3, more often than not, you're bumping into a 4 bin run against most competitive units. So it's not really needed, but there will be those times when just having AP minus 4 as standard across your army is amazing. And when you're running a pure Scion Force, I imagine it's a really good way to go. One of the relics that is really good for Scions and is unique to them is the Refractor Field Generator. You put this on one of your Tempesta Prime Command Squads and all friendly Militarm Tempesta Infantry units that are within 6 inches of the Tempesta Prime gain a 5 plus and vulnerable save. Not only is this generally a great durability boost for your relatively fragile Scions, because they've only got that four save at toughness three, but it also gives them a distinct advantage over the Kazakin. Remember we said one of the big problems with the Kazakin is they were glass hammers. They tend to go in there and then die. Well, a Scion blob with a refractor field generator doesn't have that problem. It absolutely can last in the fight because between their immovable indoctrination strategy, which makes them a little bit more durable as well, and the refractor field generator, you can make them surprisingly durable. But speaking of relics, let's get to the biggest and best thing about Scions which is the Scion Death Ball. 
This is a tactic that I came up with, which I guarantee you is S tier. If you are a competitive 40k guard player, you are going to want to include the sign death ball in your army. Every single person who I have suggested this to, who has gone away and tried it, has come back and said, flipping heck, stronger language than that, that sand death ball is something else. So now that I've got your interest and I've hyped it up sufficiently, let me take you through how it works. You are going to take a Cadian Castellum and a Militarum Tempestus Command Squad. You're also going to take three units of Scions. Each one of these sound squads is going to be equipped with as much rapid fire weapons as you can get your hands on. You're going to take them with double volley gun and also double plasma gun. The Tempesta Command Squad is going to have a regimental standard, a Master Vox, a volley gun and a plasma gun. And the Cade Castellan, you're just going to take whatever free upgrades you can put on him. You're then going to spend a couple of command points on the command squad and you are going to give the Tempesta Prime the Drill Commander Warlord trait and you're going to also spend a CP to give the Regimental Standard the finale of the Nemodesh First, also known as the Big Bullshit Banner. Combining all of this together, the orders, the auras, the warlord traits, the relics, you are going to end up with 30 scions, all of which doing maximum shots at a 24 inch range. That is a total of 66 attacks, many of which are plasma and hotshot volleygun. All of these are going to be hitting on twos, rerolling ones with exploding sixes. All of these are going to be re-rolling ones to wound and ignoring any to hit modifiers and any kind of rule that stops your opponent from losing wounds. That's right, the big bullshit banner stops you, your opponent from using wound caps like on a Catan, stops them from using feel no pains like a 5 plus shrug and... After a recent FAQ, it also stops your opponent from using reduced damage. No duty eternal from Dreadnoughts, no disgustingly resilient. All of those shots are going to go through at maximum damage, which is great for your plasma. It is a blistering amount of firepower. I have yet to come across a unit that can withstand a full blast from a Scion Death Ball. It will utterly delete everything from hordes to hardcore units. It just has the volume of fire, it has the strength, it has the AP, and it just has all of the rerolls you could possibly want to make sure that whatever you point it at is going to be left a smoking crater by the time you're finished. So that all sounds pretty good, right? And I'm not going to lie to you, it is. But Scions do still have some disadvantages. The big one being that, firstly, they have no regimental doctrines. And this is massive. Stormtroopers is great. And it does go a long way to making up for the fact that you don't get regimental doctrines. But having doctrines would be so nice. Being able to get your Scions with heirloom weapons and combining that with Drill Commander would make the Scion Death Ball even more potent. If I'm going to be honest, if Scions had regimental doctrines, they would be truly broken. And I think the only thing that's really keeping them in check and stopping them from being just utterly overpowered is that lack. So from a balance point of view, I appreciate it and, I, and I'm and i okay with it. But just from an advantage, disadvantage comparison to Kazakin, it is a really big Achilles heel in the unit. And it is a major disadvantage for the Scions and a major advantage for the Kazakin. They also have significantly less stratagem support. In fact, there's only one unique Scion stratagem in the book, Immovable Indoctrination. It's pretty good. It gives you Armour Contempt on one of your units and also means the enemy can't reroll ones to wound against you. It's kind of like you nicked a bunch of Votan Void suits for a turn. It's okay, but it's not essential and I often find myself forgetting about it when I'm running my Scions. Also, I have made a big deal out of the fact that Scions can be taken in a pure Scion force, and that's really cool and fluffy and fun and thematic, but one of the big problems with taking a pure Scion army is that without regular guard, you do not have access to any reroll ones to hit, and that is huge, because Scions love, and I mean they fucking love, Plasma, okay? And Plasma is great unless you overcharge it and roll a one, at which point it kills your guy. If you're taking up to 15 
squads of scions, many of which are in an Arcs of Omen attachment with an ally sign attachment, many of which are going to be running plasma guns. You're going to be finding yourself picking your own models up in your own turn more often than not. So having access to no reroll ones without guard is a little bit of an annoyance and a bit of a frustration when playing pure scions. On top of this, a big difference between the Kazakin and the Scions, and something that I think is a really big point in favour of the Cadians, is the fact that you can just include one squad of them in your army. They're actually relatively plug and play. You can go super specialist with them, but you could just have your Kazakin with a fairly take all comers strategy in mind. We'll go for the Death Ball. We'll have that mechanized unit. That's always going to have some play, right? And you don't need to take more than one squad. The problem I tend to find with Scions is if you want them to be most effective on the tabletop, you typically have to take them en masse. The Scion Death Ball is great. It is S tier. But if you're not maxing it out, if you're not taking at least three squads of Scions to leverage it, it probably isn't worth doing. I have tried it with just one or two squads and I found it to be underwhelming. It really does sort of go over the peak and really start getting that big re return on investment when you take it with three squads. But the problem with that is it's quite expensive. Three units of Scions is going to set you back 330 points. You had a command squad in there, that's another 100 points. You're looking at 430 points. Then the Caden Castellan, you're looking at 480 points. You're, that's like a quarter of your army spent on this one tactic. It is a very, very good tactic, but it is a very expensive premium price platinum one. So now that we have had a thorough look at both the Scions and the Kazakin, let's go through some final thoughts. Which ones are better? Well, the first thing to mention is, before we decide which one we're going to pick, are we Team Scion or are we Team Kazakin, is to mention that you don't actually have to pick a favourite. You can pick both for your army. There's nothing stopping you from going all elite all the way and having three units of Kazakin and three units of Scions. In fact, it's probably incredibly effective. If both of these units are very efficient and powerful, why not take both and build your army around it? But if you don't want to take both and you are deciding between Scions or Kazakin, the most important thing you need to keep in the back of your mind is you need the right tool for the job. If you're looking to just season your army with a little bit of elite infantry and you just need to plug a unit in that can pull off a nice little trick or two, then you're probably going to find that Kazakin are better for you. However, in my opinion, I believe that Kazakin do suffer from diminishing returns. I often find when I'm reviewing lists for my channel members or Patreons that I see people put three units of Kazakin in their army and I can see the thought they've got behind the first unit and I can see the strategy they're going for behind the second unit but that third unit tends to be a little bit lost and they've just put a random extra regimental doctrine on it via Warrior Elite but they haven't really got a plan in mind for it. And this is where Scions enter the chat, because as we saw with that Scion Death Ball, they are best and most effective when they're being leveraged en masse. So the question of which one is better is going to come down to you as a player, and it is going to come down to what you want your army to do, what is your overall game plan. Now, I appreciate that some people might think that is a bit of a wishy-washy answer. Morning Glory, I want you to just tell me which one is better. Well, all I can say to that is I personally prefer Scions. And I personally take the Scion Death Ball over the Kree Death Ball or the Kazakin Bomb pretty much every single game. Especially when I'm running my pure infantry army and I've already used all of my troop slots up on my Death Corps of Krieg, I need to start turning to elite infantry. And in that scenario, when I am running pure infantry and I'm running 30 Scions alongside 30 Kazakin, all I can tell you is consistently my Scion Death Ball outperforms my Creed Death Ball. But that's just my personal preference. I find Scions fit my playstyle better. But what do you guys think? Are you Team Scion or are you Team Kazakin? Or do you like both equally? Let me know down in that comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to never miss an episode.
If you really enjoyed today's video or you found it particularly helpful, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. One of the big perks you get for being a channel member or Patreon is access to the Mordian Glory Discord. This is an online community of over 900 active people. It's always popping off in the MD Discord and we're always talking about things like tactics or lists or strategies or hobbying or painting and we've even got a pretty cool and spicy meme section as well. If that sounds like a ton of fun or a potentially very valuable resource then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon. And I just want to take a moment now to say a big thank you to all of the latest channel members. So thank you to Double D, Gresigor's Bogle, Des Nation, Sergeant Dragonfire, Lord O'Man, Red Morrison, Jason Wayland, and Stephen Johnston. Thank you guys for doing your part. I also want to do a shout out to the latest Patreons too. So a big thank you to Miles Andrews, ZZZ, Patrick, Mike, Byron, Snake Eyes, and Dustin. Thank you guys for your ongoing Patreon support. And last, but certainly not least, I want to say a personal special and heartfelt thank you to all of my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the War Masters, the people that have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. So a massive thank you to Alan Blunt III, Bon Bon Vert, Phil French, Ross Miller, Swordfish Trombone, Alex Dengal, John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, Tom Sutton and August Varney. Thank you guys, your generous support makes a huge, huge difference and is a massive part of how I am able to do Mordian Glory full time. I hope you've all enjoyed today's video, thank you for watching and of course as always, I'll see you guys next time.